okay guys <clears throat> so as you guys are already listening to the uh, lecture on uh, adjudication uh, as was understood by uh, Dworkin um, as opposed to how Hart conceived of it I thought you know I should also upload <coughs> uh, the harsh, uh, Hart's perception on Hart's understanding of what adjudication is essentially is and also before that we have to complete a little bit of, uh, about the idea of legal system so I hope you guys are uh, quite clear with rule of recognition rule of rec recognition is essentially the rule which is accepted by the officials okay rule of recognition help you to identify clarify and qualify primary rules okay provide publicly ascertainable rules so that's why rule of recognition is important we also discussed how to identify uh, rule of recognition so rule of recognition is accepted by the officials so there are two ways of looking at it okay if you are not the ofi uh, official if you are not one of the officials okay <clears throat> then you will as an outsider okay you can have an external view of it okay then uh, you will look at the empirical reality okay of whether you know judges actually enforce the law in a certain way whether officials actually accept the rule of recognition or not so that will be an empirical, uh, you know, uh, a set of empirical facts, okay? But for an official, uh, the official uh, thinks of the rule, rule of recognition from the internal point of view that we discussed, that we ought to accept the rule of recognition. That's what the official think about it, okay? Now, we said earlier that, you know, official's acceptance, okay? Uh, because HLA Hart is a positivist, he says that, that ought is not a moral ought it's simply a social fact okay that you know um, that you know we ought to follow the rule of recognition which is which exists so it's an acceptance of the rule that exists okay from an internal point of view so that's it so judges so for example officials might disagree about the content of the law but if they feel that they nonetheless ought to uh, accept and apply the law then you would say that well that's the art HLA Hart is talking about, which is non-moral in nature. It is an art, it is normative in character, but it is non-moral in nature. So then we discussed that legal system is essentially a union of primary uh, and uh, secondary rules. Okay, so when do we have a legal system? When we have primary rules as well as secondary rules. So we discussed the importance of, you know, secondary rules, okay? So you have primary rules which lay down rights and duties. Uh, secondary rules are power conferring rules, okay? They help you in create, creating, you know, new rules, extinguishing existing rules, modify and judge, okay? And obviously at, at the top of it, you have rule of recognition, which identify what prime primary rules are. So the rule of recognition determines the validity of primary rules okay so yes uh, legal system exists okay when there is a union of primary and secondary uh, rule okay so there are two conditions which have to be met for the existence of legal system those are that officials must accept and apply a basic rule of recognition so yes basic rule, rule of recognition is very important here okay because without that we won't have legal system. So we discussed that in pre-legal societies, they had, you know, rules, okay? They only had primary rules. So even though you can say that they had laws, but they did not have legal system. So the essential condition for existence of a legal system is that there has to be a rule of recognition. And they must, okay, so the officials must accept the rule in the sense that they regard it from an internal point of view. So as I said, that's the reality, that's the odd, that's the normativity here. The rule of recognition exists and the officials must accept it from an internal point of view. As a standard, that ought to be complied with. So rule of recognition is what is internally accepted, okay, by the officials. And another important aspect, okay, which is not determinative though, the, uh, the determinative ex aspect here is the fact that there is a rule of recognition which is accepted. So, yes, and the second important factor here is that the population at large, so the legal system that we are talking about, okay, the population there at large, 
must generally comply with the primary rules okay however whether a population accept the rule or not is not what you know determines whether a rule is valid or not okay whether a rule or rule is valid or not is to be determined by whether it is accepted by the rule of recognition or not okay so that whether it is in accordance with the rule of recognition or not so it says that um so whether legal system exists or not you need primary and secondary rule secondary rules and most essentially the presence of rule of recognition okay if that exists then you have a legal system but apart from that you know the population you know generally okay at large must comply with the primary rules okay so that's a very important point that we are going to discuss in a while but remember this that it is not a part of the concept of legal system okay whether people accept people generally okay whether people in in one case or the other accept a primary rule or not that will not this you know determine whether a legal system exists or not okay so that the population should should accept primary rules or the rule of recognition um, is not that important a factor in determining whether a legal system exists or not only the officials need to take an internal perspective okay internal point of view with regard to rule of recognition but at the same time uh a general effectiveness of the legal system has to exist okay so when can a general effective legal system exist when the population in general also you know accepts the laws okay so if the population do not accept the law at all then what's the point in calling it a legal system but then that's not the determinative criteria as you know in practice we see that there are many people who who do not you know accept the law who who would break the law so who would escape from the grips of law now because of that we wouldn't say that the law does not exist or the legal system does not exist so whether the legal system exists or not depends on this question that is whether the officials accept the you know rule of recognition or not okay <laughs> if they do accept it okay then you have a rule uh, then you have a legal system and what are the rules um, what rules are valid there whatever rules which are in accordance with the rule of recognition so yes um, this is essentially what the idea of legal system is so unions of uh, rules creating duties and rules okay creating powers to create and extinguish modify and adjust as well as rule of recognition uh, with which we are to identify primary rules together they constitute what we know as the legal system now uh, what are the conditions to be satisfied for existence of a legal system just remember i'll uh, mention them point by point okay that rule of recognition exists okay so we know there are two ways of looking at it one is the empirical reality that's the external point of view but more than that what is important for us is that officials okay accept the rule of recognition <laughs> from an internal point of view uh um, and apart from that apart from that uh, the population also has to generally comply with the primary rules okay now population's compliance at all point of time is not necessary that's what i was in fact trying to explain because there will be always those people who would break the law now because there is someone who is breaking the law escaping from the law should not lead us to conclude that there is no legal system okay however we cannot deny that for a legal system to exist the population generally has to comply with the primary rules if the population completely do not comply with the primary rules then that legal system is not effective okay if it is completely not effective does it make sense to say that well legal system exists okay now here is a very important thing that we need to you know discuss about okay the relation between validity of a law and efficacy of a law okay so hla hard would say that that validity of a law that is whether you know law exists or not okay is separate from the question of validity of law is separate from that of efficacy of the law efficacy is essentially the effectiveness of law so hla hard says that question of validity of law is one thing question of efficacy of law is separate thing now validity of a rule okay whether a rule is valid or not depends on whether it it is in accordance with the uh, rule of uh, recognition or not okay so we discussed okay whether 
uh, that said rule okay is identified okay by the rule of recognition or not okay if you can then obviously the rule is valid the law is valid okay so validity of a rule validity of a law depends on whether it is in accordance with the rule of rec recognition or not okay now efficacy is a different thing okay law might be enacted okay some laws are effective others are less effective so when we say it is effective or it is not effective what do we mean we essentially mean that well the authorities are able to enforce the law okay most people is, uh, uh, follow and abide by the law okay so we would say that the law is effective uh, the purpose for which the law or law has been created is met okay because yeah um, as we saw but there could also be cases of laws which are ineffective in the sense that you know those are it's difficult for you know officials to enforce them okay people do not abide by those so um, you will find many people who um, you know escape from the grip of law you, you you come across many such laws okay so because people do not follow the law because officials are not able to enforce the laws okay as as is expected would we say that the laws do not exist no because as he says efficacy uh, does not determine validity whether the laws exist or not will depend on whether it is um, in accordance with the rule of recognition or not so whether officials internally recognize it as a rule or not okay if officials do even if there are cases of infractions okay of the law that does not make it any less of a law okay so he says that uh, validity is one thing efficacy of law is another thing and the validity of law does not depend on the efficacy okay but efficacy is the condition of validity nonetheless okay why is that okay so as i said that the legal system generally has to be uh, effective okay if the legal system generally is not effective okay then it does not e even exist so uh, there is an example given in the book by nigel simmons okay that you know the Tsarist laws okay the laws of Tsarist Russia are now invalid because they are no longer effective because no one cares about those laws okay so if they are completely ineffective okay if they are not effective at all then obviously we would say that okay there's no point considering uh, those laws as valid laws okay however generally okay if rule of recognition exists okay generally generally the legal system is effective okay, the fact that you know many people escape the law okay the fact that the law is inefficacious okay does not make it not a law it is nonetheless a law okay so he says that uh, mm, the idea question of validity and the question of efficacy are separate but they are not completely separate nonetheless as we have just discussed okay so legal system as a whole has to be effective if one law is you know less effective that that does not make the legal system non existent okay that does not make the that specific law as well invalid that specific law is valid because it is in accordance with the rule of recognition uh, uh, so then question arises as to what happens when there are no rules of recognition okay so how do we know that there is a rule of recognition so we discussed that yeah when there is a there is no rule of recognition we do not have a legal system then okay and how do we know then when there is a rule of recognition we know it you know for some it will be external reality okay you will observe okay whether officials accept it or not okay so if you look at this in an in, in external reality the empirical reality then from an external perspective you will see oh well whether officials accept it as a law or not okay that will be the case okay and and as you know for the officials they will look at it from the internal perspective okay so yes um, that's essentially the idea now uh, there are certain other things that i could discuss but at this at this moment i thought uh, i think one more thing i should introduce to you is this uh, the question of who are officials we've been using the word officials throwing it around you know taking it for granted as if yeah officials exist okay yeah fine officials exist okay but then who are these officials okay is there a law that says that these are the officials okay now uh, that's a difficult question to answer okay at least in uh, you know austin's you know definition of law 
his idea of sovereign was quite clear okay his definition of law was factual in nature okay it was not normative in nature there was no internal point of view so but it was easy for us to understand then okay he said that okay there's a political you know determinate you know human superior okay who pay who's paid obedience to by the bulk okay uh, so yes we know that there's a sovereign whose command is the law okay who's paid obedience to by the bulk okay of society okay so that's it's quite clear but who are these officials okay what makes the officials officials okay here's the problem we say that the officials are the one who recognize the rule of recognition who accept the rule of recognition okay what makes the officials officials are there rules that make officials officials well if there are rules that make officials officials where do those rules come from are those rules uh, any higher rules okay if there are higher rules and uh, where do they come from do they come from another source okay well that's really a problem okay but if we fall into that trap then we are again reverting back to the Austinian way of thinking that you know rules have to come from some you know higher source here not in terms of you know morally higher okay because if we say that okay the, those rules are you know morally superior then we do not subscribe to the positivist position that you know laws and morality are to be kept separate okay so yes there are rules okay, that you know has to de define you know who these officials are okay but then we find that it is the officials who accept the rule of recognition so is H.R. Hart saying that officials are in fact the Austinian sovereign because ultimately what the rules are in a legal system are determined by the officials okay so well if that is the case okay if that is the case then we see that there is not much difference between uh, H.L. Hart and Austin. It seems that he just uses, introduces us to new words. Here in this case, in place of sovereign, we have officials, okay? But it's not like that, okay? There is a very important aspect that we already discussed that makes a difference between uh, Austin, Austin's sovereign, and the officials here. The difference is this, okay? That Aust uh, H.L. Hart's official consider the rule of recognition from an internal point of view. They believe that they ought to accept the rule of recognition. Whereas for Austin's sovereign, there is no such you know, requirement. Okay, Austin's sovereign merely commands and people follow it. The bulk of the population follow it for the fear of sanction maybe. Okay, and that's a fact. That's it. Okay, we are not concerned about anything else okay there is no acceptability of it okay on the part of the people nor is that question applicable to even sovereign so here we see that in his philosophy in H.L. Hart's philosophy even when it comes to rule of recognition the officials themselves believe believe that they ought to abide by the accept the rule of recognition so they believe that they are also bound by the rule of recognition, whereas there is no such feature, okay, when it, when it comes to uh, uh, Austin's sovereign. So that's how his approach is different from that of Austin, okay. So it is that internal point of view which is very important, okay, acceptability of the rule, okay. Okay, so primary rules by the people, okay, and then rule of recognition, also by the essentially by the officials so yes that's essentially you know what you know rule of proper recognition is and uh, presence of which makes a legal system a legal system so yes uh, one more thing is that how do we distinguish between a legal uh, and a pre-legal you know state of affairs so difference we already discussed in a legal you know uh, system when we have a legal system you have primary rules, you also have, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, secondary rules and most importantly you have rule of recognition, okay. So uh, how do we know that we go from, you know, the legal, you know, from the pre-legal to the legal, okay. So for um, H.L. Hart, you would say that we must wait and see whether the rule, a uh, particular rule, okay, gets accepted as a rule or not so in a, in a rule in a, in a pre-legal society you have to wait and see whether a rule gets accepted or not okay 
Whereas uh, in, ca in the case of legal systems as they exist now, well, it, you, you don't really have to wait, okay, because you, it is quite clear, okay, if the officials accept it, then it is okay, then that's the, then you can say that the rule exists, okay, so essentially this is the difference, okay. How do we differ, different, you know, differentiate between a legal and a pre-legal state of affairs, okay. So, in the legal state of affairs, modern legal systems, you do not have to wait, okay, until the rule is accepted by the people, okay. Uh, because you have rule of recognition, officials recognize, officials enforce, then you have the rule, it is a valid rule, okay. But in pre-legal societies, okay, you have to wait and see whether the rule is, you know, accepted as a rule or not. So that's essentially how we distinguish between legal, or legal and pre-legal uh, state of affairs. Uh, so yes, uh, that's it. With that, I would like to uh, you know complete our discussion on the question of uh, rule of recognition uh, uh, and the legal system and the relationship between uh, what do you call it uh, validity of law and efficacy of, of law on the other hand. So if you guys have any confusion with regard to this, then always feel free to write to me. So. Uh, now let's proceed to another very important topic and I'd like to end our discussion with this topic, okay, and then this is now being discussed, so, you know, just so that, you know, it's clear to you, I'd like to add this, okay. The question of adjudication, okay. Adjudication is basically, you know, adjudication by the judges, okay. So we discussed earlier that unlike, you know, Bentham, okay, for e even for our uh, philosopher here, okay, he even, uh, Austin clearly accepted, okay, judge made laws as laws, okay. Now, Austin says that yes, judges make laws and judges' laws are basically, judges are basically delegate of the sovereign, so yes, those are also positive laws, okay. Uh, H.L.A. Hart has a kind of position on this as well, okay. Uh, so yes, w what is his position? So essentially it is this, okay, that uh, judges do adjudicate. So w when judges adjudicate, do they create laws, okay, or do they merely apply the laws, okay. It's not very simple, you know, uh, answer to, a question to answer. Uh, because in most cases, uh, if you read a judgment, you will find that judges say that they are applying the law as it exists, okay. But it's not that easy, quite often. There are gaps in laws, okay? When, what do we mean by gaps in laws? The, the laws that we have in rule books, okay, do not address a noble situation, noble fact situation that has come before the court, okay? If that's the case, what are the judges to do? Are they to say that, well, we won't do anything, okay? Or are they to decide the matter? But H.L. Hart says that they do decide the matter. So when they do, when they decide the matter, they decide the matter based on policies or certain moral values. Okay, so this is very important. And uh, Dworkin, on the other hand, okay, would disagree with this. Okay, so yes, uh, there are laws. Okay, where do you find laws? You find laws in the rule books, as we discussed. Okay, in the statutes and you know, maybe other ratios, etc., and precedents, etc. Okay. So yes, you have laws and then you have, apart from laws, there are also policies, okay, there are certain moral values that judges may subscribe to. Okay, judge may, okay, decide, okay, they may, may not accept, okay, but it happens, okay, nonetheless, that judges sometimes come to certain conclusion based on how they identify and understand the policy here, okay, policy with respect to that matter. And also, judges' own moral values quite often do play a part in the outcome of the judgment. With respect to 377, you have seen how the same court comes to different conclusion. Why? Because you have different judges. Okay. So, yes, um, now this creates a very important problem as I discussed. Okay. So, when the existing law, okay, when I say law, I'm referring to the, what you find in the rule books. Okay. When the existing law failed to give adequate answer to a question that has come before the court, okay, what will the judges do? Now you know that the law doesn't law is not really helping. There seems to be a gap in the law, okay. 
So would the judges take resort to extra legal considerations? So you may say maybe policies, okay, judges own understanding of policies and moral values, okay. So with respect to this, okay, you have two extreme points of view, okay, two extreme points of view. So you have, uh, uh, you know, formalists on the one hand, you have realists, okay, especially rule skeptics on the other hand, okay, American realists on the other hand. Formalists say, legal formalists, as the name suggests, they say that law is conceptually complete, okay, there is no gap in law, okay, if you know the first principles of the law as it exists in the legal system, every single future, you know, case that might come can be resolved by applying deductively logic, okay, so you have the broad general principles, in fact, in jurisprudence too, when we discuss about different concepts, that's essentially the idea it is uh, based on. And if you look at uh, uh, continental legal systems, as we discussed in CLS, you look at German, you know, civil code or French civil code, those codes are also based on this formalistic idea, okay, they come up with certain, you know, broad generalized provisions, okay, as you know, in the French civil code, there are only few provisions relating to, uh, uh, you know, a law of thought, as we know it in, uh, know it in our case. So, um, those few provisions are able to deal with many future cases that you know might arise okay so the formless position is like that that if you have access to general principles of law okay then from that if you apply deductive logic you can apply you know come back to specific conclusion and no future case you know that might arise uh, you know will not be addressed by this you know uh, by this technique okay so there is essentially no gap in the law so that's one point of view, okay. The other point of view is another extreme that says that, well, no rule exists, okay. They say that no rules exist, okay. So whereas formalists say that everything can be decided based on rules that exist, uh, uh, you know, realists, if you understand them, you know, from that extremity, then you'd say that realists say that there is no certainty in rules, okay. Judges will exercise disc their discretion in all cases, okay. In all cases, judges exercise th their discretion. Rules uh, do not really convey much, okay. What the meaning of the rules, you know, are depends on judges' own, you know, moral values and policy considerations, okay. So that's another extreme, okay. Now, Hat disagrees with both this position, okay? He disagrees with formulas, okay? He says that, no, it's nonsense to say that, okay, uh, you know, um, laws are complete. No, laws are not. Quite often, newer situations come to which without, you know, uh, you know, um, extending the meaning of the existing rules, you are not able to apply the rules just like that. So it's a lie to deny that, okay, you know, there is no gap in law, okay? So, yes, he says that there, there could be gap in law, and if there are gaps in law, okay, then judges will apply their own policy, you know, considerations and their own moral values to decide the matter, okay, as it comes before them, okay? On the other hand, the rule skeptics, the realists, okay, uh, American realists, okay, uh, HLA Hart disagrees even with them, okay? In what sense? They say that, no, it's not that, you know, there is, uh, you know, judges are not bound by the rules at all. That cannot be the case. In fact, in most of the cases, okay, judges do not have to philosophize. They do not have to think in terms of, you know, some policy con calculation. No, they merely apply the rules as it exists in the rule book, okay. But there are cases, okay, which he calls as, you know, hard cases, okay, that, that is being discussed as of now, okay. In those situations, okay, if it is, if there is a gap in law, then the judges will apply their policy and moral considerations, okay? So he says that, uh, uh, he calls it the open texture of law, okay? So when it comes to law, there is a core aspect of law and then penumbral aspect of law, okay? What does that mean, okay? The core is essentially where there is no disagreement, okay? We accept that, okay, this is what the meaning of the law is, okay? But, the, the, but then there are also penumbral cases, okay, where there is less agreement on what the meaning of the law is, okay? Because, you know, um, 
it's quite simple see at the end of the day okay when we communicate with one another okay you see that you know we agree on most of uh, you know what we communicate about okay when i refer to book you know that i'm referring to something like this okay now when i say book you are not assuming this in your head okay why is that because we have certainty about what you know book by the the word book means okay so that could be a case of core case of core okay but then there's a very interesting example which is given okay it's the case of a vehicle in the park okay which is probably being discussed in the other lecture as well okay so for example a uh, rule okay there is a rule that says no vehicles are uh, you know allowed in the park okay no vehicles are allowed in the park now the problem here is this okay well uh, um, for example cart okay is selling you know some you know ice cream etc not no, will not be allowed in the park okay can can anyone enter the park on a skateboard okay will that be prohibited by the law because it says no vehicles in the park okay now here is the problem we know that a motor vehicle will not be allowed it's clearly a case of uh, vehicle now whether a skateboard should be allowed or not it's a little difficult isn't it uh, should we call skateboard a vehicle or should we not call it a vehicle so you know that in this situation there is a problem that arises okay so in this situation how would the judge decide the matter the judge will decide the matter according to our philosopher here hl hart based on certain policy okay based on the policy consideration of the judge okay so yeah that is what you know hl hart's position is and you probably know by now that dworkin will not accept it okay because he has his own you know idea okay he says that you know mm, laws do not merely consist of rules they also consist of principles and you might have already learned what's the difference between a rule and a principle uh, is so yes uh, when it comes to penumbra judges exercise their discretion okay they decide what the law ought to be according to them okay but now what the law ought to be in those cases could definitely be based on their moral understanding etc etc but nonetheless remember this does not make him uh, that that fact that judges might decide a matter based on their moral understandings their moral values that does not mean that you know hl hart is not a positivist he's saying that well the fact that judges you know we do not deny that if you remember the previous lectures we had we said that we positivists do not deny that judges might okay decide a matter based on their moral understanding but that does not become law because judges apply a particular moral understanding but because that judges applied the law like that okay and that's the rule of recognition is the rule of recognition that makes the law valid okay so you need to understand that okay so what hl hart is essentially saying here is that in penumbra cases judges quite often decide what the law ought to be but but the law is not law okay law is not that law is not law not a valid law because it was based on a particular moral idea particular moral belief but because it was decided by the judge like that okay but essentially what he is saying that judges moral value, you know values their own policy considerations do play a part while deciding penumbral cases okay so yes courts exercise discretion in this uh, you know in this hard cases as he calls it okay the courts do regard to policy considerations fairness etc etc in uh, you know deciding a, a particular case essentially the gap, gap case essentially the hard cases okay so um, as you know with respect to this okay the problem position of that of realists is this that they say that there is no core case at all that rules have no certainty okay that rules ultimately mean what the judges mean them to be okay but hart says that no in most cases there is a core meaning of rule only in penumbral cases where there is uncertainty is there a 
uh, is there a problem and that's when the judges exercise discretion. Now realists say that yeah judges exercise their discretion in almost all cases whereas um, um, H.L. Hart says that no only in penumbral cases they exercise their discretion. Well the problem is not really you know you know that extreme as it seems here. Now the thing is that uh, one might say that well you know the realists seem to be wrong here. They're not really you know wrong here though as you can see. Here's the thing. You see that H.L. Hart is right when we when he says that in most of the cases okay, judges apply the rule as it is. Okay, because we do not disagree about what the meaning of the words are there in those rules. Okay, because we share some kind of moral ideas within the society. Okay, we have a shared moral values. Okay, a shared understanding of you know meaning. Okay, because of that we do not have you know confusions okay so in most of the cases judges in fact apply the rule as they exist because we have we share the same meaning but then in penumbral cases okay we do not share the same meaning we have confusions so look at the case of skateboard okay whether it ought to be allowed in the you know question is whether it is allowed in the uh, park or not okay now that depends on okay whether we agree about the policy consideration, whether we agree about the moral values or not, okay? That will determine what the meaning of the law there is, okay? So it is in those cases, okay, H.L. Hart would say that, well, mm, judges would exercise their discretion, okay? So yes, that's essentially the position, okay? So yeah, so the, from the extreme point of view, okay, you know, from the uh, rule skeptics point of view, okay, they essentially say that there is no core settled meaning. Well, if at all it is settled, it is because we broadly share some idea of morality, okay. And then they say that uh, there's the rules depend on background policy and moral agreements. That's what I just said, that rules essentially, the agreement about the rules, okay, even in those core cases, if there is an agreement uh, about the rules, okay, that's because there is some kind of agreement among us about the policy as well as about the moral questions that exist okay but in certain other case there is subjectivity of meaning of words okay it is in those situations that you know judges you know as H.L. Hart would say adjudicate okay uh, I mean uh, uh, apply their discretion now on this question uh, I think your other class is almost over so I would like to end our discussion for now. I'll start another you know, video very soon and then complete this discussion.